Well, hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. Another day, another painting video. But just before I start, um, I just want to clear up a few things. Um, I did say this was new, making a painting book and videos. Um, so there are one, one or two little issues. I just want to make it clear that um, the actual pages for your book will have the I'm just going to shift that up to the corner will have the number up in the corner MPB1, that's the first page the next page will be MPB2 but as you'll see um, there were some other pages that I used to sort of supplement the actual subject title. Now if you want to keep these, that's fine. You can just keep them in the book as I'm doing, um, behind the actual topic, or you can put them at the end as, a, as an appendix. Just another little point I want to point out regards the book and um, content etc. I have about 20 pages to go in the book and it'll be a whole range of subjects um, but it's just to let you know that they won't be in any specific order. What I mean by that is most textbooks, um, and I produced a textbook several years ago, How to Paint Scotland in Watercolour. Don't worry, it's not a sales pitch here. I've only got about seven left anyway, and we're in lockdown and printers won't be doing it, so I won't be able to supply anybody with books. But what I wanted to say was... Um, my book was no different to anybody else's. If you look at the contents, it covers things like materials and then onto some techniques, basic techniques. And before you actually start looking at painting, you know, you've had about 30 pages worth of talking about paper and paints and brushes and so it can get a bit, um, I wouldn't say boring, but um, you're not actually into the, the actual elements of carrying out watercolour paintings. So I'm going to just mix them up. You'll be getting, um, one day it'll be about how to mix greens, the next one it'll be about contrast, the next thing it could be about painting outdoors, etc. So there'll be a whole range. So. Don't worry if they're not in any order. Okay, so let's get started for the actual page and the topic for your book. Today, as you can see on the, the board here, the subject's going to be paper. Now, I noticed um, quite a few of you in the comments have been asking about paper, and particularly what paper to use to start off with this painting book? Very good question. I'm just going to start off and explain, in case you don't know, the, the basic types of paper that you do get for watercolour painting. There are mainly three types. Um, I'll just zoom in a bit and let you see them. You get what's called hot pressed, and that's just a very smooth surface. I used to call it years ago cartridge paper. Um, some people like that. You get um, what's called cold pressed, but that's got a medium surface, and that's probably the most popular with um, with artists. Um, and then you get rough, and it's a really rough, grainy texture. That's my favourite. I always do um, paintings. If I'm doing a painting that that's uh, a commission work, or somebody wants a painting of whatever, and I'm going to sell them in uh, galleries, I tend to go for the, the rough textured paper. Now, you get different weights. Um, 90 pounds, 140 pounds, 200 pounds or 300 pounds. I use um, 200 pound weight. A lot of um, students, um, I would recommend 
probably start off with the 90 and then move to the 140. There's a big factor here, um, unless money is not an object, you've got to look at the price clearly as we move up they get to get a bit more expensive. I'm just going to show you a couple of um, pads and paper that I bought just before we had locked down a shot up to the local art gallery and bought some uh, paper, so I'll just zoom out again, let us see. Right, well here's a, a I bought um, two pads, here's a, a pad that I would probably recommend for um, doing your painting book. This is, um, this pad, 25 pages only cost something like five pounds and it's, it's ideal for for, for practicing um, and if you're just starting off in painting I would I would go for something like this that's um, that's the actual sheet here that I'm using and the second one that I bought was um, this one here it's um, 140 pounds um, Taylor Rowney book and that's nice paper as you can probably hear me moving it about it's more like a board um, and that's a, quite a nice size of pad as well that's um, about 9 by 12 um, and I just thought I'd let you see um, how I get my paper I buy my paper loosely I buy it in packs, so I think they're four in a, in a pack, yeah, and um, it's 200 pound weight, so it's quite heavy. The beauty about that is, um, I was talking about price-wise, um, painting, here's a painting I did on the board, that 200 pound paper. The beauty about it is you can turn it over and paint on the other side. Um, so you can see I've been doing some trees here. So again, it just depends. Um, but for complete beginners, I'd probably recommend this um, cheaper paper that I got. You'll probably find that if you start putting big washes on the paper, you will get what we call a cockling effect. It'll start to bubble up. Um, like this but don't worry it's um i don't want you spending um, a lot of money on sheets of paper when you're just learning so you know we've just got to take one step at a time just before we finish on the subject of uh, paper um for beginners people who are just absolute beginners never painted before and even if you're a beginner who's been trying for you know two or three months or so I would suggest that you use size of paper about um, 10 by 7 you remember um, all the videos that I've been doing you remember this one that's that's on a, a 7 inches by 10 inches sheet of paper and um, I would think that's fine for you to get you started well, Matt, I'm going to do a little exercise. We can't finish having the sheet blank. Let's get some colour on it. But I've just written it down here. 10 by 7. That would be fine. OK, just to finish off, let's get the paints out. Two minutes. Come on, have a go. So I'm going to make a quick sketch. Bit of a hill here. You know, a little building. Always buildings, isn't there? We have some trees here and some grass. So let's have a go see what we can do. Right, get the brushes out. I'm going to put a blue sky in. I'm just going to check the time. Yep, okay. See how long this takes. Right, let's go. 
fling in some now you can see that this paper dries very quickly this is the cheaper paper it's got advantages <coughs> excuse me and disadvantages it's good that this is drying very quickly just now so we can get these trees painted right I'm going to mix up uh, yellow a bit of blue and favourite green here we go don't worry if you didn't understand how I got that the next subject is mixing greens or buying greens whatever uh, I'm going to do the side of the, the building let's put that in Make a slightly darker um, greeny colour up here just to break it up a bit. Side of the hill. Uh, front of the building, a bit of yellow ochre colour. And you drop some colour in there, a bit in there, it's still wet. Uh, I'm going to go for a slightly greyer colour roof and I'm going to mix up a darker green for the trees. Let's see what it looks like. Not too bad. I'm going to put one or two up there as well. Right, that'll do it. Two minutes, I've just checked the phone. So, that's just a, as I said, didn't like finishing the sheet without any colour on it. So it gives you a bit challenge to try and do that. I'm just going to paint that in. Two minutes. The two minute challenge. Okay then, well, so hopefully that's been quite helpful for you on the paper side of things. Um, and again, this is um, the second, second page in your book, number two, and it's about paper. Right, I'm just away to start again. The next um, one will be about greens and do you mix them up or do you buy them?